After all, in the Lunar New Year, many Chinese write Fai Cheng, couplets on red banners, to celebrate and cast away bad luck and evil spirits. Many still come and visit. People would go to the Mammal Temple to make a wish and get Fai Cheng hereafter, hoping all wishes to come true. Raymond Su has been a calligraphist for over 30 years. He teaches art to primary and secondary school students. He's been doing these Chinese New Year banners for years. This is the second year he's set up in this location. Of course, we had the pandemic the past two years. Many of us are depressed and a little worried. So people would like to write wishes like stay healthy or repel bad elements. I hope things will go back to normal this year. Stay healthy is most important or everything goes well. And better school grades is a hot topic too. Because many parents have expectations. Like last year, I hope everyone has a job. These banners are always written on red paper and hung at both sides of a door, along with another banner at the top. Young Jiang, a professor of Chinese culture at Poly U, says the color preference dates back to a Chinese legend of a mythical beast named Mian, whose name also sounds like the same word as year in Chinese. It would visit villages during the Lunar New Year to eat people and livestock. They use the red color to scare or scare away a so-called Nian beast. Because that Nian monster was so scared away, are uh, scared of red color and also red lanterns mm -hmm. as well, right? And uh, red scrolls, like uh, Spring Festival couplet later. And you almost notice that a lot of auspicious things uh, related to Chinese holidays, especially Chinese uh, New Year holiday, and basically red figures most prominently. The red couplets and banners not only scare away the beast, but carry blessings on them. I remember when I was a kid, there were actually particular people who wrote on those couplets. Usually they will, uh, they would write down poetry lines, very auspicious ones too. For example, uh, about spring, about prosperity. The upside down fu, fu, dao fu, is actually pronounced so closely to fu dao. That means your happiness, your blessing, and your prosperity are coming in Chinese. And of course, there are the red envelopes or lai si, filled with money that are handed out during the holidays for luck in Hong Kong. According to Professor Yun, the name used in northern China is Hong Bao, which literally means red packet. She says homophones figure largely into traditions of what's lucky, and in Hong Kong, the term Lai Si is used for this reason. Lai Si is involved from Lai Si, uh, meaning good market and good business. So what I find very uh, fascinating is that you see how this actually reflects the Hong Kong culture and Hong Kong as a hub of international trade and business. If you can associate this tradition, the red, and also with your good market, that would be, be terrific to start off a year. Lyces are given during the first 15 days of the Lunar New Year from married people to children and in business from seniors to juniors. The giver uses both hands to present the packet and wishes the receiver good health. The receiver accepts with both hands and wishes the giver good health and prosperity. Flowers are another lucky item for the new year, with many representing prosperity, health, and luck. As always, red and blooming flowers are considered auspicious. But I think buying flowers, just like uh, many of other practices for Chinese New Year, play a lot on the homophones. For example, if you pick the Let's talk about the flowers you shouldn't buy first. For example, Mei Hua in English is plum blossoms, right? So, but the Mei, the word Mei in Chinese is the homonym of Mei, which means bad luck in English. So you don't want, of course, bad luck for it to start the year, right? So you uh, want to avoid plum blossoms. These pretty kumquat trees that make an appearance in the run-up to the Spring Festival are called Kamgutsu in Cantonese. 
Cam means gold, and gut sounds like the Cantonese word for good luck. So these trees symbolize wealth and good luck. But not all practices are the same through China and Hong Kong. For example,、uh, the peach blossoms. But I don't see people from northern part of China. I don't see them buy peach blossoms so often as the people here do. Lucky foods as well vary in different regions. One simple example is that gels, right? The northern people they really like to probably now thanks to、uh, mass media and people tend to have、uh, dumplings gels、uh, across the country. But before I think northern people tend to have dumplings more. And then southern people they tend to have tang yuan, like sticky rice dumplings more. There is a difference between that、uh, different regions. Yun says she notices Chinese immigrant communities or cities like Hong Kong and Singapore tend to practice more of these old traditions than the Chinese living in the mainland. We always tend to say that、uh, less and less traditions are being observed as we grow up. The immigrants. To Singapore, they actually came from Fujian Province, and you notice that、um, they still carry on a lot of traditions that they used to have probably 50 years ago, 100 years ago. They had men like China nowadays, and especially in cities, you never see people burn joss paper for worshiping ancestors. And no one wanted to do that too. Probably not even so many、uh, people from the countryside will do that, but. In Singapore, I noticed that they 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 have this big iron and a steel bucket for 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 people to burn the joss paper. But one tradition she says that all Chinese do to prepare for the Lunar New Year, regardless of where they live, is the house cleaning. And during the first five days of the festival, you shouldn't throw or clean things out. You cannot sweep off things directly from. Your apartment or house,、uh, because they believe that in so doing you might、uh, have swept away the fortune for the upcoming year. So, and then you might wonder, what about trash, right? How can we keep trash for the, the whole week? But then there is a way to do that. You just to put the trash in the garbage bag and you tie it, you tighten it up, and then you throw it away. So not directly. So that ritual is very interesting. You just don't do it directly. And of course, across China, all are aware of the twelve Chinese zodiac animals. But what is the story behind them? There are varying stories, all similar. According to one legend, the Jade Emperor wanted twelve animals to serve as his guards, so sent word of a great race, where the earlier one reached the heavenly gate, the higher their rank would be. In the end, we have twelve animals of the zodiac ranked in the order they reached the gate. The animals also served as a way to measure time. Images of the zodiac animals date as far back as 475 BC, during the Warring States period. At the very beginning, the zodiac animals they are used as a way to count the years, and not just the years. They also use the animals and the Chinese people. They use the animals to count、uh, days and hours as well. So it's kind of like a 12-day cycle. And for hours as well. Yes, you do have an animal for your hour, an animal for your day, an animal for your year, and that's how you calculate how your life will be like, not just the year. Professor Yun says there is a movement on the mainland to bring back some of these traditions. In Hong Kong, the traditions offer an insight into the culture and mentality of the people.